so the big definition is uh, the conjugate of the quantity a plus b is a minus b. But it works both ways. The conjugate of a minus b is a plus b. So instead of writing all that, I just put vice versa. So these guys are conjugates of each other. And you already know a special property about conjugates. When you multiply them, what happens? When you multiply a plus b times a minus b, you get a squared minus b squared. So in this case, I'm thinking of it as a multiplication formula, reading it from left to right. It's also a factoring formula if you read it from right to left that you're pretty familiar with now, right? So when you multiply conjugates, it's the only time when you multiply the, the binomial quantities or binomial-like quantities where you don't have to worry about the outer and inner multiplication, right? Isn't that what it tells us? If you just multiply the first terms, you get, it, you get the a squared. If you just multiply the last terms, you get the minus b squared. What happened to the outer and inner terms? They not, when you add them together, they make zero. Yeah, they, they cancel out. So you get minus AB for the outer plus AB for the inner. They make zero. So it's the only time you don't have to worry about the outer and inner terms from the FOIL method when you're multiplying stuff out, when you're multiplying conjugates. And we can also use that fact to rationalize certain kinds of denominators. Now, when you see examples like this in your book or in the homework, you might, the directions might say to divide, it might say simplify, doesn't really matter. Uh, it is a division problem. When you take seven divided by the quantity of root five plus two, that's a division problem. But the way we divide isn't like long division or, or how you're used to. The way we divide is we simply rationalize the denominator. Um, so, here, that trick of multiplying numerator and denominator by radical 5 won't work. Does everybody see why? So don't write this down. It's not going to work. Because, okay, the division bar is a grouping symbol, and that's a quantity, root 5 plus 2, right? Well, if you multiply straight across, what would you have to do with that root 5? You'd have to, okay, the first part looks good, right? Oh, you distribute the root 5 times root 5, get 5, right? But then you distribute the root 5 to the 2, and you get a plus 2 root 5 in the denominator. You haven't gotten rid of the radical, have you? Or you got rid of one and then introduced another. So uh, that, that trick's not going to work. So when you have, whoa, went too far. When you have a quantity involving addition or subtraction in the denominator. If you want to get rid of the radical, then what you can do is you can multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so what's the conjugate of radical 5 plus 2? There you go. So radical 5. Okay, so there's the original problem, and then I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of radical 5 plus 2, which is radical 5 minus 2. Well, the definition that we talked about, right? The conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. Well, no, because the opposite of a plus b would be negative a minus b, right? So no, it means take the opposite of that sign, that operation in the middle, basically. So if we do this, remember, there's an applied set of parentheses around any quantity involving a plus or minus. The division bar is a grouping symbol. The numerator, usually you can just write down the multiplication. You don't actually have to distribute if you don't want to. So you could just, okay, multiply straight across. Multiply the numerator times numerator, so 7 times the quantity root 5 minus 2. You could distribute the 7 if you wanted to, and you'd get 7 root 5 minus 14, which is fine. But it's really the denominator multiplication we want to do. So we're multiplying conjugates. Do you have to worry about inner and outer terms? No. So just go root 5 first times first. What's root 5 times root 5? Root 25, which is 5. 
That's why the radical goes away. And then what's uh, 2 distributed over a negative 2? The last terms multiplied together. Minus 4. So that's the, you don't have to, me I mean, you should have that formula memorized, but the a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. Well, think about it. If a is root 5, then a squared is 5. If b uh, is 2, then 2 squared is 4. a squared minus b squared is what we have on the bottom. But again, you don't have to think in those terms. You can just think in terms of the f and the l from the, from the FOIL method. Anyway, what's 5 minus 4? So we get 7 times root 5 minus 2 over 1. Are we going to write it that way, though? No, we'll just write it as 7 times root 5 minus 2. So when does this work? If you're asked to divide or rationalize the denominator, in other words, get rid of the radical in the denominator, and you have a sum of terms or a difference of terms, at least one of them involving a radical in the denominator, then multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator to get rid of the radical. 